if the auto industry is tanking out so hard based on a giant chip shortage, how did Tesla get around it? Listen to this. But I think if we if we look out beyond the next 18 months, what's clear is that this, this build out of the digital infrastructure is going to require more and more uh, intellectual property from the semiconductor industry, clearly more manufacturing at scale. Um, and so the, the longer term secular uh, drivers here are, are healthy. The, the dynamics in the shorter term are going to depend industry by industry. And not only are more right. devices being sold, more content of semiconductors go in each device. And so we entered the pandemic with the industry thinking we had a 5% growth, where today looking out the industry for the next five years has a 9% growth. And as you've heard earlier on your program, putting capacity on is not something you, you just do in a week. It's by the time, the minute you say go, and I'm gonna order equipment, a company like GF, it's probably a year out before we can produce just the wafers, not even the final product for our customers. We have to buy the equipment, install the equipment, qualify the equipment, and then begin production. And so this, this shortage right. is going to be with us well into 2022. I don't think the demand is perishable. I think it stays. We're going to play a few clips from Bloomberg that independently explain that Tesla has five reasons why they are not suffering during this chip shortage. The first is they didn't drop their orders when all of the other automobile manufacturers panicked last year and reduced their chip orders under the common sense assumption that a worldwide pandemic might decrease the demand for expensive durable goods like cars and trucks. When the pandemic shut down car factories in March, automakers expected less orders for passenger vehicles, so in turn, cut their orders for chips. At the same time, working from home and 5G drove demand for laptops, smartphones, cloud services and data centers, so those industries increased their orders for semiconductors. That caused chip makers to switch production to those areas rather than pile up chips they couldn't sell. But what both car and computer companies didn't expect was a quick rebound in demand for their products. The second key point is logistics. Tesla's really good at figuring out what they think they're going to need in the near future and getting the products from country A to country B. Colin, first of all, when it comes to deliveries, how did Tesla defy the odds? Record deliveries in a pandemic, and at least in the U.S., an economic recession. Yeah, I think it's important to, to understand the sophistication of their supply chain management. I think they, they saw a lot of these issues coming early and really kind of stuck into a, a couple of key markets in the U.S. and in China where they, they didn't have to have such a long uh, logistics timeline to get the cars into the hands of the, the consumers. So I think it was a, a combination of seeing these things early, getting the components to where they need to be uh, in, in a timely way, and then delivering uh, close to home with the, with the factories. We'd like to interject for just a few seconds and ask you to click like, and if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We try to stick with facts. Thanks, back to the show. The third point is just conjecture on our part that we're not able to actually verify, but we're pretty sure is true. Because Teslas are so much simpler, and, and for that matter, all full electric vehicles are simpler. They have fewer things to manage, fewer things to control. We're pretty sure that they actually use fewer chips. And that gets us onto our fourth point, which is Tesla uses custom chips, which no doubt combine the functions that other manufacturers get from multiple chips. We're still dealing with this chip shortage though, and I'm curious if the number surprised you given how so many other uh, companies, industries are suffering because they can't get the chips they need. Well, you know, they've got, you know, dedicated supply for their own chips around the, the FSB program. And the fifth and last point really can't be overstated for a company of Tesla's scale. Tesla is still tiny by automotive standards but their partners and chip manufacturers think that they're going to be a big deal in the future and they don't want to annoy them. So as we hear in this clip, they're a priority customer. So, you know, we think they have very strong relationships with those, those chip makers. We, we do think that they are one of the highest growth uh, platforms for EVs and, and certainly a technology leader within that, that technology node. And so they are a priority for a number of their suppliers. One of the things that we're seeing across the board 
is that the, the, the larger buyers are getting the components. And, and we think Tesla is a, a strategic customer for a lot of their suppliers and, and so I had a little bit easier time. But again, I don't want to de-emphasize the, the point here that they saw this coming early. They did this well in, in 2020 in terms of seeing the, the impact of COVID and, and preparing for it. And we think they, they saw the, the re-ramp in the economy coming early and, and uh, adjusted accordingly. And we'll wrap up with a couple of clips explaining the production volumes serious analysts are expecting from Tesla in 2021. I, I call this a paradigm changer, not just for Tesla, but for the EV space. Just shows demand skyrocketing going into the rest of this year. We continue to view this as a green tidal wave that does not just going to lift Tesla, but the overall EV sector. And so what does that mean if they were able to do this with all those constraints in the first quarter, what do you think they'll be able to achieve in the full year? Yeah, and I'd say whisper numbers, we're thinking they can do about 800K for the year today. It's probably closer to 900K. Next year, we're looking at probably something close to 1.2 million. And I think that what just shows, take a step back, 3% of automobiles today globally are EV. We know that goes 10% in the next three years. Tesla leading that. I think what you're starting to see here, this is... It's obviously been a painful sell-off for Tesla in the EV sector, but we believe that's mostly in the rearview mirror now. I mean, there could be some bumps in the road, but I view this 12 months from now, $1,000 stock. So given that delivery number in the first quarter, how many cars do you think Tesla will deliver in all of this year, 2021? You know, they have a shot at, at you know, going above 900,000 this year, and, and certainly this is a good start. Um, you know, I, I think as we look out across the landscape, you know, they need to uh, procure some batteries. Like that's a, that's a key element. Obviously, there's the chip shortage, but there's, the demand is there. Uh, consumers really do want these vehicles, and they certainly have uh, a lot of folks that are looking for them right now. And, and so it's really incumbent upon them to just produce them uh, to hit those numbers. But certainly 900,000 or more is, is within their own possibility. Please put your comments below and we'll get back to you usually within a day. If you like this video, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. And if you like this type of thing, please click subscribe. Both of those things make a huge difference in the Google algorithm. We mostly talk about electric vehicles, the energy industry, and high technology. And we take on both sides of issues. We really try to avoid politics and the random opinion claims of either fanboys or political partisans. We try to stick with facts. And if you have any other questions and concerns, you can always get a hold of us at www.partisanissues.com. Thanks.